Hey what's up guys Tektine here and I am back again with a brand new video so before I begin this video you know how we do it as always I want to thank you all so much for watching this one if you enjoy my content make sure you leave a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed to the channel and also follow me on Instagram for the latest updates on this phone and other devices and yeah I mean if you have any questions DM me there I respond pretty quickly and you'll definitely get your answer so now let's talk about the content of the video and why you guys are actually here so today we're going to be reviewing the oneplus nord n200 5g's camera or triple camera setup so throughout this video i'm going to be referring to this phone as the n200 just because the name is ridiculous um like imagine me saying oneplus nord n200 5g 10 times in this video not gonna happen so you guys are not here for that all right so this phone has a triple camera setup with the following specs so you have your primary sensor which is a 13 megapixel at f 2.2 you have a 2 megapixel at f 2.4 which acts as a macro sensor and you also have a 2 megapixel at f 2.4 which acts as a depth sensor this phone can also record 1080p at 30 frames per second and it does have electronic image stabilization and the camera itself the module itself actually protrudes quite a bit so this phone will rock back and forth if set on a flat surface so that's something to keep in mind now as for the front-facing camera it actually has a higher resolution in the front-facing camera department than it does on its main rear camera sensor so it is a 16 megapixel sensor at f 2.1 with video capability up to 1080p at 30 frames per second now the comments that i've received from people who actually used this phone so far is that the camera is trash and okay how do i phrase this in a way that makes sense i don't completely agree but at the same time i don't completely disagree because listen this is at the end of the day your cheapest 5g device that you can get that is actually decent quality when you make a phone that is 240 dollars you have to cut costs regardless of where they're cut they had they has to happen okay and the camera it's definitely one of the cost cuts that oneplus had to take in order to make this device so let's talk picture quality so we're going to start with this first picture which is a picture of leaves and the colors themselves are just washed they're not really vibrant they're not saturated they're just not that good and the following picture also shows the same example i mean it's it's just a flat picture overall so i'm not saying it's the worst thing that i've seen on a 240 dollar phone actually far from it the third picture it has this golden red color to it and it actually shows just a little bit of a better color than the previous two so yeah in some scenarios the colors are washed in other scenarios they're fine okay so this next picture really showcases that there are scenarios where you can actually get decent color so the blues look look fine they look good it's definitely hit and miss it depends on the situation that you're in and the next picture is also kind of okay and this basically showcases the zoom capability of this camera so it does not have optical zoom but it does rely on its uh, macro and depth sensor well mostly on the macro sensor to provide a up to five times digital zoom so this is the first one before this is the actual main sensor at 1x zoom this is your 2x and this is your 5x for some reason the 2x actually gave a better color than the actual main sensor which is weird but whatever i'll take it and also one of the things that we're gonna have to talk about is the dynamic range on this phone the dynamic range is okay when you when you just take a picture of the sky your um the bottom half of the picture which is your actual the ground the cars it's dimmed down and a little bit dark now um this next picture also is supposed to showcase the dynamic range as you can see the the skies themselves that are slightly overexposed which takes off points when it comes to dynamic range but the tree actually is decently exposed not perfectly exposed but decently exposed to where you can actually see both the sky and the trees so my issue with this phone in particular is that it has such a bad hdr which is high dynamic range and basically in the high dynamic range is supposed to bring balance between the sky and the actual ground check this one out boom right the picture looks overly saturated and basically cartoony it's just not a good picture the hdr here just tends to just oversaturate the whole picture and tells you okay i cannot balance it i don't have the capability my sensor is not that good 
So here you go. I'm just going to do my thing. The processor is just oversaturating the image and that's what you get. So not a good look as far as HDR. However, in some situations, HDR does come in handy. Not when you're taking pictures of the sky and the ground. So when you're taking pictures of other subjects, it actually performs pretty decent. Now, it may be hard for you to tell the difference, but the picture on the left hand side is with HDR on the picture on the right hand side is with HDR off and I can tell you the differences if you guys can't see them so the colors look slightly better with HDR on when you're taking pictures of uh, certain subjects but yeah now low light photography so low light photography I mean if it's struggled in normal daylight photography it's gonna struggle through low light photography so there's no way of running from it it's it's not good in low light that's the bottom line. So this is the first picture and this is the second picture. A lot of noise and just just not, not a good look, okay? So me and you guys have to keep in mind that this is a $240 phone. Now the selfie camera is, it's okay. It's usable, pull your phone out, take a selfie, that's fine. It's not the greatest, but it's okay. Now the video capability, so like I said, it shoots video at up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it's actually not bad okay it's not bad for a 240 dollar phone definitely usable in a lot of scenarios okay let me give you guys my final verdict so to the comment that said that this camera is trash like i said i don't completely disagree but this overall is a it's between okay and decent just because you're paying 240 dollars for this phone and also for the fact that you can still take pictures that are at the end of the day usable okay they're not horrible quality, they're definitely not good, but they're not horrible quality by any means. And yeah, I mean, that's basically the TLDR behind this camera. It takes between okay and decent pictures, not the greatest. Low light is not, is not going to be good. Video is decent. The selfie camera is decent. The HDR, I recommend keeping it off when you're taking picture of when you're taking pictures of both the sky and the ground. With that being said, I mean I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and also make sure you follow me on Instagram. So thank you all so much for watching. And I will definitely catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.